Hello guys, welcome to Solving Solutions, your number one channel where you get solutions to all your solving problems. It's nice having you in class again today. How have you been? On today's video, we are going to do a brief introduction or we are going to just introduce you to hydrographs. Now, a hydrograph is a graph that shows the flow rate of a river or stream over a specific period of time, right? Good. Now, we are trying to have um, a graph that has a um, the flow rate or okay let's look at our data that has what time over what the the flow rate or maybe the tidal values right because these are observed readings are actually what tidal values so we are going to have what a graph that actually shows the the flow rate over what a period of time now the parameters are actually time the discharge the precipitation basin them um, characteristics inflow data and then what's the river stage or water level now these are like um, the general parameters that um, you are going to need for a hydrograph however we are trying to just coin it down to um, tidal hydrographs perhaps i should just put this in in quotes we are trying to what, coin it down to what um, tidal hydrographs so what we are trying to do here is that for a surveyor it actually refers to a graph that represents the elevation of water levels or flow rates of a river stream or other water bodies over time, which actually represents what we have here, right? Good. The time, which is what increasing at um, a maybe a specific interval, and the different what elevation values, right? So um, the surveyor often uses or surveyors often uses what hydrographs to monitor changes in water levels during specific events or extended periods right good so we are actually plotting what the water level the elevations of water levels or elevation of water levels over time right good so they are valuable tools for working in various fields and the rest of that now uh and then they provide crucial information for taxing flood monitoring water resource management river channel analysis eia etc now it showcases basically it showcases what the ebb and flow of water as it responds to tidal forces and other influences the data set we are working with actually comprises what a record of time and corresponding tidal readings captured at 15 minutes intervals throughout a single day now as we told you earlier we have what the time captured at 15 minutes interval throughout what the hundred and what the 120 so we just have what for two days so yours can be one day or as many days as possible but this is how we have actually presented it then um, the tidal readings represent the periodic rise and fall of water levels caused by what the gravitational pull of the moon and the sun over the river now the level of time granulity that means the 15 minutes interval we have used for allows for a detailed analysis of the reverse or stream inflow or flow rather flow behavior and helps in accurately creating a hydrograph you know if the time interval used was a bit longer you know the refinement of the graph would not be as fine as it is but since we are having it what at this 15 minutes short short interval it gives us what a detailed analysis of what the reverse behavior right good now the presentation we are going to use what um, excel to plot the water level or tidal height against time now the hydrograph will be created using what a scatter plot in excel and it offers a visual representation of the tidal variations throughout the day the x-axis which is the horizontal displays what the time intervals from 0 0 2 what yeah 0 0 0 0 0 2 23 45 that's about 11 45 pm while the y-axis the vertical represents the corresponding what and water levels in meters right good now the hydrograph illustrates the periodic rise and fall of tides with peak points indicating high tides and trough points indicating what low tides we are going to see all of those very soon so without um, further ado let's see what we can get with what our data um, the first thing is that since our data are all sorted let's see we are just going to highlight what the two data we want to plot against each other which is what the time and the tidal values then we what we select down that um, we highlight all of them right good so we use what control shift then the down 
arrow then um, we are going to use um, insert then under insert we come down to chart and then we are going to use what any of what these um scatter plots we are using what um scatter with what smooth lines we can actually see scatter with straight lines we can see scatter with straight lines and markers we can just see scatter so let's use what um scatter with them um, smooth lines right good so we have that of the 100 now we can see from this chart we can see from this chart let's just um, edit this the 100 let's say the 100 hydrograph right good let's just call that um, the 100 hydrograph so basically this is what the graph that shows the tidal values against what the time of what observation right which has actually been scaled to five hours right good then we have what our tidal value scaled to what 0.5 down to 4 so the highest we are going to sort it very soon to see what's our high tide to see what's our low tide right good so the first thing we have just done is to plot the hydrograph this as we have seen on our report which um, shows what or which states that it offers a visual representation of the tidal variations throughout the day the tidal variation so this um, undulation the should i call it sinusoidal undulation this undulation shows what the variation of the tides throughout what the day which is this time right good so we also talked about the eye which the hydrograph illustrates what a periodic rise and fall of tides with peak points yeah the peak points as the high tide and the trough points as what the low tide so the peak points around there are somewhere around this point somewhere around this point then the trough points are somewhere around this point but since we cannot be able to identify them easily we are going to sort our data to see which one comes at top and then which one goes down to now form what the corresponding what peak and then trough points which what the high and then low tides what respectively right good so this is for the 100 we can similarly do the same thing for the 120 so then we have something like um just need to copy this and then i would rather paste it here and then we have the um, 120 right good so we have the 120 hydrograph so this is what the hydrograph for the second day basically you can see that what the variations are not the same the variations are not the same if you look at the time this is around them um, is it um, 5 a.m right good now around 5 a.m we're having what um, a troya whereas around 5 a.m we're having what a peak right good so you can now see the variations what differ now before we leave let us look at something else we can still plot a composite um, hydrograph that comprises what the both days so we are now going to have what two variations or yeah two graphs superimposed on each other because our time interval remains the same however the um tidal variations differ so let's just um copy this down then i'll say this then let me just um, paste it somewhere around here good right good so we are now going to have what a composite which would start from somewhere down here down there right good then similarly as we've been doing we can just come down to insert we still use this and then we have what the let's drag this down somewhere here right good so we have um, a composite which is um, somewhere around this composite um, I drew right good now this is like a composite this shows what the the variation for 
day 100 and what day 120 so basically you can see two graphs being superimposed and if you study it closely you would see uh day 100 in it and then you would also see what are uh, day 120 in it right good so this is how it goes now we are going to look at how to sort this data we are just going to look at um, that of one day so let's say let's say we are using um okay instead of um the 120 let's use instead of the 100 let's use um the 120 right good so let me just copy that put it on the new sheet and then paste it there good now let's look at how to sort this data to now get the corresponding high tides and low tides because there was actually a column for remarks let me copy this column as well and then leave it somewhere around here good let me copy it and leave it somewhere around there good so now for us to have what the high tide low tide you know we cannot start looking at this with our eyes to know okay this is the highest or maybe this is the lowest so we can actually use um, excel to help us sort this data right good so the first thing is that we just um, click on this cell that we want to sort we come down to sort and filter and then we go sort smallest to largest so we just click on this now there's a warning that um the Microsoft Excel found the time next to your selection. Yeah, because it's very important that the time is also sorted alongside what the, um, the, the tidal observations, right? Good. So, so since you have not selected this data, it will not be sorted. However, do you want, what do you want to do? Do you want to expand the selection? That means you want to include the time to be sorted or you want to continue with the current selection. So it's best to what? expand the selection to now include the time so that the corresponding time or the times will now correspond with what the tidal observations right good so we are going to expand our selection so an alternative way is to just select the both of them and sort so we just click on sort then we now see what the the tidal values being sorted right good so since we started from smallest to lowest so this should be the low tide or uh, let's say the lowest tide then coming down we are going to meet what the high tide or something so we have what high tide good so these two values are actually what the peak which is um 0 3.704 and then the trough which is what 2.195 so this is the 120 right good so let us look at these two values let me select this and then this and then let me see if i can copy them let's come back to our sheet one i just want to paste them somewhere good let me paste these two values here so for the 121 let me see for the 121 let me paste them somewhere around here good now for the 121 we were able to sort our data here to have a high tide of 3.704 meters and then a low tide of what 2.197 meters right good so let's now see our hydrograph by analyzing it with our eyes let's see we have what a peak sorry a troyer and then by overing the mouse around you can see 2.198 which is like an approximate value because we are not on the exact point so you can now see so being being a physical science that the value that was sorted by excel is actually right and let's look at what the the peak value are. we can meet something like 3.695 which is an approximate value that is very close to 3.704 as um, automatically sorted by excel okay i think there should be another eye point here which good this is 3.704 because i've seen that this point and this point here goes a bit higher so this is what 3.704 which is what which was sorted by excel so basically we've introduced you to how you can get a um, hydrograph using a single day data or maybe combining data of both days and then maybe drawing some insights what from the 
graph that um, is being um, plotted using what um, Excel and then you can also get what the high and then the low tides and you can use that to get what the tidal difference the tidal difference is simply equal to your high tide minus what your low tide this gives you what the tidal difference right good so it's actually very simple to use what is a um, spreadsheet package Excel to carry out this particular um, analysis of maybe maybe using what the hydrograph right good so the resulting tidal hydrograph can help analyze tidal patterns tidal ranges and variations in water levels over different um, tidal circles right good so thanks for coming to class we hope um, we've provided solution to this particular surveying or hydrography related problem we are going to see you on our next video ensure you keep staying safe and have a very good time bye